Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash trial and get started. And welcome to the third episode of Criminality. I almost forgot the name of it, so that really started off. Where good. are we? <laughs> well, you're on a you're on a doing? beach, apparently. Becca's got a cool background. Yeah, yeah. I found the uh, COVID-approved way of traveling. It's called a Zoom background, <laughs> and I popped it up today because Melissa, it's March second, and like mentally, I go to spring, but the weather in New York is 25 degrees. But it's going to be 50 tomorrow, So, and it was 50 <sighs> yesterday, so we're just going to have the worst month here in New York. And I know weather talk is not interesting, but I just – I needed the it's, palm tree yeah. behind me today. Would it bother you to know that my son jumped in the pool yesterday? Would that be like – okay, it would. I, pretend. It's like a little bit of a yeah. knife through my heart. <laughs> So we just wanted to say before we started, we are so excited with the response we've been getting. So many oh positive gosh. comments. Um, if they weren't positive, they just didn't tell us, and that's okay too. <laughs> that's really the best policy moving forward. If you're not loving this, you can just like tune uh, out. Don't mention it absolutely. ever again. Delete me. Delete <laughs> us. It's totally fine. You never have to tell us. Yeah, no hard feelings, but... To those of you who've listened and loved it and told us, took the time to message yeah. or leave a review, it's been so nice to hear and read those. And yeah, it's just been, it's been so it much is, fun. Absolutely. So I, I've talked to Rebecca a little about this story, not really about the story, just going into it. I thought when I took on my second episode that I, the one I picked originally was a little dark. So I said, you know what? I'm changing it. I'm going with the Anna Nicole Smith story. That's not dark at all. There's no tragedy. <laughs> Nothing bad happens. One of my very worst ideas, and I've had a lot of them. I've had a lifetime of them. Rebecca, do you have any, not concept of Anna Nicole Smith, what is your background with, with Miss Smith? We have very little background together. So it, it is conceptual. I feel like she's one of those people who's almost a caricature. Right. Uh, I think we did that to her yeah. probably, right? Yeah. Like unfairly. I think of commercials for diet products that I couldn't tell you the name of if my life depended on. Don't worry. We'll get there. Oh, perfect. Maybe Nutrislim. I don't even know. Custody battle and untimely death that, again, if you asked me the circumstances, I, I don't know that I could tell you. I could make some guesses about like an overdose, but I don't know. So, okay. so I've got a lot to learn. I'm ready. You have a lot to learn, but really, you have a very solid background there. Oh, really? I could probably just stop there, but I won't because it's so messy and just I've I knew about Anna Nicole Smith. I was fascinated by her, not in a uh, an idolizing kind of way, but I just thought she was an interesting person. So I feel like I I went through a stage where I like looked at delisted.com every day and PerezHilton.com. And there was like a couple years of my life where those were the radar online. I looked at all those things. So I I knew enough about her. But I learned so much and an unsettling amount of information is now in my brain and it will be forever. And so I want to share it with you and make you suffer. And I'm sorry, enjoy the things yeah. that I have now learned. <laughs> yeah, you need to fill in some gaps for me because I'm telling you, those three things I mentioned are all I know. And I have a feeling a lot happened in between these things. Oh, gosh, the things I have clicked and the things I have seen just they they can't be taken away from me, although I'm going to try. 
So the story this week, as I said, was about Anna Nicole Smith. But Anna Nicole Smith started out as Vicki Lynn Hogan. She was born in Houston, Texas on November 28th, 1967. I'm already shocked. Sorry. Right? <laughs> like, No, that's all right. Like, there's like name variations, right? But that's so like many. new name, like... Those two names, too, like, speak very different things. So uh, this is already interesting. New name, who dis? And so (laughs) so her parents are married, Virgie and Donald. She has five siblings. They get divorced when she's pretty young, and her mom becomes a corrections officer. I saw some interviews with her mom. Her mom was strict and, like, no BS kind of person. Just on these interviews, I was like, I'm actually scared of this woman. Yeah. So in these interviews, she seems really brash and really harsh, but – Anna Nicole, Vicki Lynn, was not doing very well in Houston. So the family decides, let's send her to live in Mejia, Texas with an aunt and her cousins, kind of just to give her a smaller town and maybe she'll be able to just do better. Maybe she'll thrive in this. So she moves there. She's six feet tall, which as somebody who is a member of the Six Foot Tall Club, that's it's tough being a really tall girl. And it's be- tough being a tall girl in a small area. So she stuck out like a sore thumb, hated Mejia, hated everything about Mejia. She hates school. Her aunt tells her, her aunt says basically she was only in school long enough to get her name and photo in the yearbook. Like that's all she cared about. By the way, in the yearbook, her name is Nikki Hart uh, because her stepdad's name was Hart. Last name was Hart. And she decided to go by Nikki. So Vicki Lynn Hogan to Nikki Hart to eventually Anna Nicole Smith. Wow. So, I mean, not to like overstate it, but maybe some like identity issues and like not- No, you could overstate it. There's a lot of identity <laughs> yeah, issues Yeah, like here. she doesn't seem like comfortable in her skin. And that tall girl thing, yeah. not my struggle. I know it was yours, but I remember a girl in our high school who was six feet and gorgeous, but it didn't matter that she was gorgeous. Like she just slumped in her chair. It was so hard for her. And like she won. I mean, she's still like, and you too. I mean- you're you guys win, but it's hard. I think you kind of don't want to stand out in high school right. for it's, anything. That's what I, exactly. I was telling my daughter that because she's really tall in, in middle school, and I said, right now you just don't want to stand out. You want to blend in, and so it's hard being like you very much stand out. But it's okay. It all it all comes together in the end. So in the tenth grade, she drops out of school and she gets a job at the uh, local chicken restaurant called Jim's Crispy Fried Chicken. No. I'd eat there. I'd eat there in a, in a heartbeat. With a name like Jim's? Yeah, James isn't involved, but Jim, I'll eat your crispy fried chicken. So she meets this fry cook named Billy Wayne Smith. Uh, the two fall in love. They get married when she's just 17 years old on April 4th, 1985. She gets pregnant. She has a son, and it, her son's really the light of her life. His name is Daniel, and he's born in January of 1986. So six months later, she leaves Billy Wayne Smith, she leaves Mejia, and she moves back to Houston with her son. So she gets a job at Walmart and Red Lobster. She doesn't have an education, and she realizes, I don't really have a great way to make money. So one day, she's driving to Walmart, and she sees one of those like neon signs with the woman dancing, and she decides, I'm going to go in there and see what that's about. She goes in, doesn't realize it's a topless bar, but decides, I'm just going to give it a try. In interviews, she talks about being very flat-chested and a little overweight, and so they put her on the day crew. Anna Nicole Smith worked the day crew at a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that, that made me a little sad. I, yeah. I bet they didn't even serve Jim's crispy fried chicken no. during the day crew. Yeah. Well, she starts making money, and during this time, she has a roommate and her son, Daniel. She actually sends him to live with her mom just for a little while while she's trying to make some money to take care of him. She realizes, though, if she wants to do well um, as a dancer, that she is going to need some implants, some yeah. Jessica and Ashley's, if you will. So she ends up saving a lot of money to get them, $14,000 to get them. Dang. Yeah, I didn't know that. I haven't Googled them in a while. I've Googled them. To Google them. <laughs> I've been known to go- oh, Prices. <laughs> I have not Googled prices on them in a while. And uh, yeah, that was a little more than I was thinking, but- she has two surgeries and she ends up having double D's. This comes up a lot. I'm not just talking about her chest, but this, her surgeries and all of that comes up a lot. Yeah. And that's part of her persona and the caricature totally. for sure. That we Absolutely. remember. Yeah. Yeah. And so this causes her though, 
extreme back pain, ends up getting uh, migraines with these implants, she starts taking pain medication. And so this is kind of where that all starts. Oh, no. Yeah. And so she starts doing really, really well, though. Her Paris and Nicole's start bringing her in a lot of money. Do you get what I'm doing So here? we're just going to be naming um, her. I'm just doing reality stars. <laughs> I'm just naming reality stars for her chest. <laughs> okay. No, I'm tracking. I just wanted to okay. make sure I was yeah, picking was, up what you're putting it's down. It's a rough, it's a rough, it's a rough one. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to mention it much more. So she does really, really well, but she wants to be a model. So she pays for classes. They tell her you're a little overweight, which that comes up a lot and uh, is super rude because she is absolutely gorgeous. And so they tell her you're too heavy. She quits modeling and it's like, I'll just figure it out myself. She quits the um, classes rather. She continues to dance, and in 1991, an octogenarian oil tycoon, J. Howard Marshall, comes into the dance club. Those are the best kinds of tycoons, the octogenarian <laughs> ones. <laughs> and quite the octogenarian he was. He takes a liking to Anna because what's not to like? And she doesn't really pay attention to him too much. She just thinks he's nice, and he's just a customer. But he keeps coming back to see her, and eventually she says that she starts falling for him. Uh, but to understand how this 26-year-old at the time falls for this man that she'd later call Papa, referred to him as Papa, you have to know a little about old J. Howard Marshall. Okay. So J. Howard Marshall, he is obviously a giant oil tycoon, but he is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Really, really smart. He goes to, on to graduate from Yale, gets involved in the oil business, and he owned 16% of stock in Coke Industries. I don't know a lot about Coke Industries, but I know it's the K-O-C-H one, which is basically worth as much as the C-O-K-E one. Yes. Loads of money. So he's married for 30 years, gets divorced, has two sons named J. Howard Mar Marshall III and E. Pierce Marshall. You're going to hear about Pierce quite a bit. Okay. So he gets remarried. He has this new wife he calls Tiger, and he's in love with her. He's getting older. She's getting older. And by the 80s, she has Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And so he's super lonely. And this is whenever he starts making his trips to the dancing clubs. So he goes in. He meets this lady named Lady. Her real name is Jewel Diane Walker. And she's from Valdosta, Georgia, which is where all of my family is from and makes this story even more. No way. Oh, yeah. It's it's I. Yeah. Anna Nicole Smith and I probably share DNA. If I'm being completely honest, there's there's a connection to us somehow. That's really, wild. But, yeah, it, it is. So she does lots of odd jobs, finds that that's not working. She has four kids. Her husband's left her. She's in her 40s, which is a little late in the dancing game. But she starts. She does really, really well. So one day, J. Howard Marshall comes in. He's looking for a companion, and that's how he meets Lady. So they hit it off immediately, but according to her, she'd say later that it wasn't a sexual relationship. He said that it was a sexual relationship times three, and there's some Meaning, probably the sorry, three times? Three times. Okay. Over like <laughs> a decade. So he just adores her and he just gives her money and he gives her cars and he gives her everything she could want. Millions of dollars and stuff, right? He tells his son, if anything ever happens to me, I want you to keep taking care of lady. And this is when Pierce kind of realizes, oh my gosh, my dad's spending all of my inheritance on this woman he's not even married to. Uh -oh. It's not, you know, my stepmom or anything like that. So during this time, this is the stuff I've never heard of, but I found it fascinating. So we'll see how it goes. So during this time, she gets a boyfriend named Dale, number one. That doesn't work out. Then she gets a second boyfriend named Dale, number two, is what I'm going to refer to him as. His name is Dale Klim. And he is in, tell me if you've heard this as an occupation, if you've ever seen a resume with this. He's a carpenter shrimper. No, it makes no sense. There's no wooden shrimp. No, but it's kind of like, oh, there were no more like plumbing butchers around. I don't really <laughs> know. Where are you finding these people? So she found them at some club dance kind of thing called Studebakers, which just reminds me of designing women. Oh, my that. gosh. Sugar bakers. I know. The best. And, right? And so she even employs this new boyfriend as her bodyguard. J. Howard Marshall knows that it's her body bodyguard. But he doesn't really know she has a boyfriend. He, 
I guess he kind of does. He calls it her livens, which I don't know what else you'd do with the livin. He's just giving her money. He starts another oil company just to name her as the owner of it. Oh, so he, lucky. So, <laughs> I like that that's what you're taking from it. You're like, so, so lucky. No, I'm doing, I'm working on my story right now for the next episode. And like, it's about oil people. And I'm like, oil, that's, that's where my whole lineage that's went wrong. The- we didn't get into oil. <laughs> <laughs> who knew so he he tells you know his son like I was saying you have to take care of her whatever happens to me you have to take care of her but by 1991 lady's not super happy his wife is still alive she realizes I might never get a really big part of this you know we might not ever be married I might not get anything so they're having issues and this is whenever he finds out through his son Pierce Pierce says hey dad are you paying taxes on all those gifts you're giving her millions of dollars of gifts because anything over ten thousand dollars you have to and he said no but she's pretty and uh, they uh, just <laughs> IRS loves that response right and so he tells lady hey by the way I've given you millions of dollars and stuff you've got to pay taxes on all that so she is upset Pierce also closes this checking account she has. So she's going around town, buying cars, bouncing checks everywhere. So she is pissed. Then she decides she's going to get a facelift. So she goes to have this facelift. And the night before, she changes her will. On her on some pink paper in her daughter's room, she basically writes, everything I have, I leave to my kids. And I leave to Dale number two, my bodyguard lover, Livin. Oh, okay. Nothing to J. Howard Marshall. She dies during her during her surgery. She had some kind of congenital brain defect. She was 51 years old. Oh she gosh. dies in the surgery. Isn't that terrible? Also crazy that she left that will. I mean, I know when you're having surgery, it, you are inclined to think that way. Right, right. But it usually doesn't happen. And then it did. That's so sad. See, I always go to the, if I don't write it, nothing can happen. And that's a terrible way to think. So we actually have our wills now, but it used to be whenever I, I had a several surgeries a few years ago and I would be like, if I don't write it, nothing can happen. That that's is not a healthy way of thinking. Solid, <laughs> solid logic. Is your will on pink paper? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's stuffed in a vase in my daughter's room, which is what she did here. So Jay Howard pays for this funeral. He's still in love with her. There's a copper coffin that she goes in like Elvis was buried in, and it's so heavy, they have to actually drive it from Houston to Valdosta. And even takes another limousine to go behind the hearse that has just a single red rose in it all the way from Houston, Texas to Valdosta, what? Georgia, because he loves Lady. You just, you got to love That's Lady. Like very extra. Isn't it? It's He's got to be like, I've got a few years left. We're going to burn every last one of these pennies. I, I have a secret suspicion he hated his son and he was just trying to get through money. He is devastated by her death and he goes to some men's retreats called the Bohemian Grove to rest, which I feel like in your 80s with that much money, isn't your whole life kind of resting? Also sounds culty. It's <laughs> You would go there with that. <laughs> you would go right to the cult. So- he gets home and he finds out about Lady's new will. He finds out that he's getting nothing. Not that he was going to have a whole lot, but it's kind of a personal thing to him. All the stuff that he's given her, she's giving to her boyfriend and her kids and all that. Two months later, his wife dies as well. So he's kind of going through a lot. And the next month is whenever he meets Anna Nicole Smith. So he's just come off of this 10-year relationship, this marriage. He meets... Anna Nicole and he is thrilled but during this time good old Papa and his son Pierce take the associates of Lady Walker his former lover times three and they go to court they are suing her saying that suing her state that she fraudulently seduced him and her state at this point is worth 5.8 million dollars wow right I mean 10 years of They would just go to lunch together, Rebecca. They would literally go to lunch together. He would pass her blank checks. How do we get this sort of situation? Can this go on the vision board? This is the vision board is this is this is beyond a vision board. This is like (laughs) after we record brainstorm session to how to get in on this kind of plan. I mean, it sounds magical. I've got to say so five point eight million dollars her estate's worth his family or Pierce really is like, she's not getting this. And so they they go and sue her. Well, 
all of the assets are really frozen. She hasn't paid taxes on all of this. So it's really worth not a whole lot. Mm. So the family ends up getting like a house, a car, and uh, I don't know, probably the vase that she put her will in. <laughs> not a whole lot. And so it kind of just shows you how litigious this family is. But really, this is just kind of, that was a lot of background information, but this is just kind of how it goes with this family and how the connection to Anna and kind of where all of this love affair with beautiful women has started for old Papa. So whenever she's no longer there, Jay Howard feels like this is my shot of love. This is my <laughs> rock of love, Brett Michaels style. And so he he adores her. He really loves her, wants to be around her. She loves the attention. She loves being able to support her son. And Jay Howard knows she loves horses. So he buys her this beautiful horse ranch. Wow. He, yeah, he just wants to marry her. She's not super interested in it. During this time, she ends up sending photos into Playboy. So there's some discrepancy. I read that a boyfriend sent in photos. I read that Jay Howard Marshall sent in photos. There's just no way. He's got people for that. He's yeah. not the one that did it. It's between a boyfriend and Anna Nicole. They send these photos in, and all the editors, except for one, love them, think she's gorgeous. The one editor thought she was a little heavy, which is so freaking annoying, but that's kind of what went on her whole life. Ugh. Yeah. And so in March of 1992, though, she debuts on the cover of Playboy. During this time, though, this is whenever all the models were stick thin. Yeah, this is like so... Kate Moss era. Exactly. Yeah. Kate Moss, all of that. So she, here's this curvy woman who looks very Marilyn Monroe-esque. Yes, she does. And just oozes sex appeal. So she just takes off. And in May of 1992, she lands the coveted centerfold in Playboy. Mm. And this catches the eye of Paul Marciano. Do you know who Paul Marciano is? Sounds familiar, uh, but no. Yeah. He is the co-founder of Guest Jeans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I thought you might. He wants to sign a three-year deal with her. He wants her to take over the Claudia Schiffer campaign. Before he does that, though, he says Vicki Lynn Smith as a name isn't so great. We got to work on that. And so that's whenever the two of them discussed it and changed her name to Anna Nicole Smith. And that's how we've always known her. Wow. Isn't, Isn't that, that cool? just, I love those stories of like the moment someone, you know, made that decision and went from Vicki Lynn to Anna Nicole. And it, it's just so interesting. Yeah, it is. She signs a three-year deal with him and she begins modeling overseas. She's doing H&M, which I didn't even know H&M was around back then. But in Norway, they end up having this debate because where one of her billboards are is this intersection and cars keep having, there's accidents there over and over again. So they had to fight to try and get these billboards taken down because- That's amazing. Isn't it? Nobody would run into anything if they saw me. They'd probably run into me. That's what they would do. <laughs> Everybody would aim for my billboard. <laughs> Melissa, you don't give yourself enough credit. Oh, but it's so fun to be self-defecating. Not defecating, deprecating. <laughs> Self-defecating? <laughs> this is why I can do it. Don't tell me I'm not giving myself enough credit. I just said self-defecating. Oh, <laughs> so Anna Nicole is signed to William Morris quickly after this. And wow. she, yeah, and she starts getting uh, parts in movies, like a movie called Hudsucker Proxy, which I've never heard of, but I think Tim Robbins was in it, and Naked Gun 33 and a third. There's that infamous shot of them showing her knees, going up, showing her knees again, just showing how tall she was. During this time, though, she and J. Howard Marshall are still an item, huh. even though she's actually in another relationship with a woman named Sandy. They have matching rings, so it's kind of like she's living her own life, but she still seems to really care about him, really. At this point, she's living in L.A. He's living in Houston. And so in February of 1994, though, things are going really well in her professional career. But her personal life, she is dealing with a lot of pain. And she's been on a lot of pain medications. And she ends up having a rupture of her implants. And oh. yeah, and mixes her pain medication with alcohol and ends up ODing. And she's in the hospital for three days during this time. Your face. Sorry. Seat? I'm like, wait, it, but this isn't her ending. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, wouldn't that be a terrible way to be like, and then that was it. I have nothing else. <laughs> well, I figured there could be an, an aftermath to her estate and her story, but um, so that had already happened. Okay. Yeah. So she's had, she's had several issues like Aww. this. Yeah. Afterwards, she starts losing a lot of work. People are worried that she has some issues and that this is a liability. Yeah. 
Jobs are drying up, but Jay Howard does not care. He still loves her. At this point, he's proposed to her several times. One time at a Red Lobster, his favorite restaurant, in front of the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. It's relatable. It is. And she said no. She wanted to make money. She wanted to be her own person before she married him. Good for her. Yeah. Finally, she thinks, I've made it. And also things are drying up and not going so well. I should marry this man. So on June 27th, 1994, they marry in this really small wedding. She wears this beautiful white dress and her son is the ring bearer. They go outside, release doves, exchange their nuptials, and she literally gets on a plane and flies back to L.A. She <laughs> leaves him figuratively and literally at the altar. So during this time, she's getting $50,000 a month from her new husband to just spend however she wanted. Oh, my gosh. Vision board. I mean, there has to be – there's got to be somebody out there who just wants to give money away. I feel like there's websites for this. We can do it. I'd be the best wife if, to live in another city and get a five-figure allowance. Like, sign me up. I know. I know. We, we can do it. We can make this happen. So the ranch is hers. He's bought her these cars, rings, everything. She's making her own money. And – Anna Nicole is still living in L.A. with Daniel, her son, and Jay Howard's in Houston. And so she would fly back and forth to see Papa. Six months into her marriage, though, he gets really, really sick, as you will in your late 80s and early 90s. He's, he's not doing very well. He's in Las Vegas. She flies to see him in the hospital. But she says that she's only granted very small amounts of time to see him, that Pierce has hired bodyguards to stand in the room, so she can't really even see her husband. There's a really weird interview of her speaking to maybe 2020 or something, and she's doing this like, he just kept putting his hands up and reaching to me, but it looked like this motion the whole time, which just looked like the milking <laughs> symbol is what I'm doing. Ew. It was really kind of, I, I didn't quite get what she was doing there. So during this time, J. Howard Marshall's not doing well, and Pierce moves to be his father's legal guardian. His first bit of business was to cut Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah, I so felt we got to know. Yeah, this is like a temporary plan at best, Rebecca. We've got to maybe put some money in stocks when we get this whole grift started, and <laughs> know there will be an end. For Correct. It. Plan B necessary. There you go. And so this is going to start a huge legal battle oh. between Anna Nicole Smith and her stepson, who is about 40 years older than her, Pierce. Uh, can I ask? Oh, for, 40 years Please. older than her. So she's 40-ish. Oh, her she's still 26. Um, her husband, her her son, stepson, is about 66, and her oh. husband's 89. B okay. So when you said he was older, 40 years older Sorry. than the son. The son. Anna gotcha. Nicole so she's still super young. She still hasn't even gotten like the crow's lines. She doesn't yeah. use neck cream at this point. Dang, She's just so that's lucky. saving her a lot of that money. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. This stuff is a sponso. <laughs> there you go. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Of course. So on August 4th, 1995, J. Howard Marshall dies after he gets pneumonia. He's 90 years old and he and Nicole, Anna Nicole were married about 14 months. When he dies, he's worth $1.6 a billion dollars. With a B. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that came out of you so easily. <laughs> oh, goodness. Before he dies, though, the spousal support thing has not been resolved. But that's okay, because there's a lot more to fight about, Rebecca. There is going to be two funerals for J. Howard Marshall, just to start. She has one. The family has another. At hers, she wears her wedding dress, because... <laughs> I don't know why. Um, it, it was in storage. And so she wore her wedding dress. She also sang The Wind Beneath My Wings at the funeral. That's bold. And she has an amazing voice. Like really? she's released. No, absolutely not. Oh. There's no reason she should have done this. <laughs> like, wow, who knew? I mean, why not follow that path? I know. Okay, no, gotcha. No, I wish there was audio of that, but I could oh, not find them. Cringy. File not found. Yes. Yeah. And so she's devastated. And just a few months later in November, she ends up being hospitalized for six days for what her representatives call an adverse reaction to pain medication. She's oh, still man. using a lot of pain medication at this time. She claims that she really loved her husband. He loved her and that he had verbally said that he wanted to leave half of his assets to herself and her son, Daniel. She had no idea if he had written a will. Turns out she was not in it. And everything's left to Pierce. He has mm. another son. J. Howard Marshall, Papa, has another son. And only Pierce is getting 
all of this, $1.6 billion. Oh, so now we have another angry relative, We've I'm sure. We've got another one. Let's do this. <sighs> It's sort of shocking, though, that there isn't anything written since he had taken the time to write about Lady Walker, right? Right. That's kind of where this whole thing comes from. He tried to make it where she had stuff if something happened to him. And so, of course, he would do something for his wife, right? That only makes sense. Anna, Nicole, and Pierce end up going to court over this family will and trust. After six months, the Texas courts hear this case and they reject it. They say, it just stands. Deal with it. And... In February of 1996, Anna Nicole is not doing well. She files for bankruptcy in California. She doesn't have this money coming in monthly, weekly, whatever her allowance was. It's a lot. So she's determined now more than ever that she needs this money that Jay Howard promised her, allegedly. So the fight continues. And during this time, she doesn't have a lot going on. There's no real acting gigs. There's no modeling. She is continuing to self-medicate with pills and with food. And her court cases just continue. And her family would say that during this time, there's a lot of yes people in her life. No one's telling her no, because ultimately, if this whole thing goes forward, she's a billionaire. And you want to be the person sitting next to the billionaire, right? Oh, yeah. In 2000... The case is still going on, as you can imagine. But here's where it gets complicated. Anna Nicole appeals the Texas ruling that basically threw the whole thing out, right? And the bankruptcy court rules against Pierce and J. Howard Marshall and enters a $475 million judgment in Anna's favor, which is huge news. Yes. So what is the, I know you, I'm sure you didn't like get into the minutia of the case, but like, what is there, if if it wasn't in the will, like what, on what grounds can they appeal it? Just that they were married and she deserves They were it? married and yeah, basically. Yeah. And then okay. she's saying there's a lot of hearsay of her saying and he's always taking care of her. So of course right. this is whatever what he meant. This to would do. be in alignment with what he wanted. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So in two thousand one, she's back to court. And this time, obviously Pierce does not want her to have this money. So they go back to court. This time she's in front of a jury. And This is one of those things where I can't tell if my memory is real or fake. I know I've seen clips of this, but I don't know if I watched the whole case. I don't remember if it was all televised, but there's some good stuff in here. Going into this trial, she should win. She is highly favored to win. They've already said that she deserves this money. She really just has to go up on the stand, look like a sympathetic woman who's lost her husband. Yeah. And she should walk out of there a millionaire. But... But then walks in a man named Rusty Harden. And if you know anything about the Anna Nicole Smith legal battle, you know the name Rusty. And, and you'll, you'll know why in just a minute. He is determined to break Anna and turn her from this sympathetic widow into this greedy vixen. So he calls several witnesses to the stand, including a nurse named Letitia Hunt. And this, Rebecca, is the thing I text you about and said, I finally found the thing I thought was real. I was so excited to find yeah. this because I thought I'd made it up. Right. Letitia Hunt is a nurse and she claims that she once saw Anna Nicole videotape J. Howard Marshall while asking him questions about his will. So they also have this videotape. Okay. She'd start and stop the tape at different times. So she'd say, have you ever had that moment when you're leaving the house and you wonder, did I lock the door? Or worse yet, you start spiraling and you imagine all the what ifs. I used to feel that way all the time, but it wasn't until a few years ago when I heard about a break-in just a few blocks away that I realized I needed to really step up my home security game. And now I can spiral about the what-ifs on things that don't matter, like reality stars, instead of the what-ifs of home security. We've had Simply Safe protecting our house for the last few years now, and it's a total game changer. With Simply Safe's fast protect monitoring, I know within five seconds if something's actually up and the lifeguards can actually speak to intruders to stop them. That's faster than a reality TV star can throw a drink. One of the things I really love the most is you're not locked into some over the top 90 day fiance level contract drama. Simply Safe is actually affordable as well, less than a dollar a day with no hidden fees, so it's easy to love. It's no wonder they've been named Best Home Security Systems by U.S. News and World Report for five years running. Whether you want to install it yourself, it really takes less than an hour, or have a professional handle it, Simply Safe is as easy as flipping channels between Chimp Crazy and the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. So why wait for the drama to happen? Get Simply Safe and know your home is covered just like I did. Protect your home with 50% off a new Simply Safe system 
plus a free indoor security camera when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafe.com slash criminality. That's simplysafe.com slash criminality. There's no safe like Simply Safe. This podcast is brought to you by eHarmony, the dating app to find someone you can be yourself with. Why doesn't eHarmony allow copy and paste in first messages? Because you are unique and your conversations should reflect that. eHarmony wants you to find someone who will get you. How are you going to know who gets you if people send you the same generic conversation starters they message everyone else? Conversations that actually help you get to know each other. Imagine that. Get who gets you on eHarmony. Sign up today. Honey, I want you to tell the judge that you want your wife taken care of. But while she's doing this, she's pulling her shirt up and showing her Paris and Nicole's. Yeah. And oh, so... <laughs> it makes me so uncomfy. I know. But I mean, solid plan. But I feel like if I did this, it would be less $475 million and more like an Applebee's gift card and a roll of nickels. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to walk out of there with very much. It would be a, um, a recommendation for a new doctor for me. <laughs> Exactly. This is a huge thing, obviously, and this is a big part of the case. And this was a, a thing in the case that I really thought happened, but I just could not find the facts. Yeah. I finally found the article. So you're vindicated. Very vindicated. Yeah. And so a big part of this, though, is going to all come down to Anna Nicole testifying and how this how this goes. Rusty realizes very early on that Anna could be very volatile and that he could push her buttons. And he tells his brother on the second day of cross-examination she's going to self-destruct. And he was right. Oh, he, no. Yeah, he asked her at one point, how do you spend $100,000 in a week? And she responds, quote, Rusty, you have to understand, it's very expensive to be me. P.S. She's a prophet. And er- <laughs> Erica Jane. This is yes. an Erica Jane song, right? That's what I mean. It's prophetic. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. She like basically put that in the universe and Erica Jane scooped it up and like and made And she made a song. shoe dazzle song, a commercial. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, insert song here. There you go. (laughs) But the most infamous line of this case comes a little later on. So at one point, Anna Nicole says, Jay Howard died from choking on food, not from having pneumonia. And Rusty says, do you seriously swear under oath that Pierce Marshall, his son, orders people to let his father choke to death? And Anna Nicole is sobbing and she says, yes. And then he says to her, Miss Marshall, have you been taking new acting lessons? To which Anna Nicole very famously says, screw you, Rusty. Oh. And that was, that's a great, it's just. <laughs> Sounds I like a line from an 80s movie. Oh, it's so good. Screw you, Rusty. And that's the line that people remember. But really, he's just as dramatic as she is. He's a great attorney having to represent the Marshall family. During closing arguments, Rusty brings up the fact that witness after witness in this trial says that Jay Marshall always said Anna's the light of his life. So he says to the jury, quote, I was just thinking, what song would capture the mood of this trial? And he ends up playing the Debbie Boone song, You Light Up My Life. The lawyer? The lawyer plays it in closing arguments. He plays You Light Up My Life in court. I know. And according to Rusty, this is on his website, the jury goes crazy. But needless to say, the jury, (laughs) based on that, did not think that Anna deserve this money thought they ruled against her and so the jury did not find Anna Nicole to be a sympathetic witness they did not think that she actually deserved this money and so the estate the will is again reversed so now she's getting nothing although Anna Nicole leaves empty-handed Rusty did not he actually has a signed photo of the jurors from the trial all standing together underneath a caption that says and I kid you not you lit up our lives what? Oh, this guy. I mean, he <laughs> gives this is why people hate lawyers. Oh yeah. No, this is this is why. I mean, I kind of love him because it's just the most fascinating thing, but it doesn't make sense. I don't know. This was on his website, so I didn't see a picture of it. He could be He's lying. Gross. He is. But he fascinates me. And his name is Rusty. That just seems like a perfect name, right? So Anna Nicole is devastated and she's broke. In early 2002, though, she's back in court. This time, a U.S. district court rules that she's entitled to assets that Papa made during their marriage, plus $44 million in punitive damages from Pierce trying to cut her off. I like this. Yeah, she's awarded $88 million. Oh, wow. Yes. In 2002, 
here's where the reality show comes in. Ben Affleck is Benifer with J Lo. This was a simpler time, Rebecca. Oh, I the, I mean my goes my mind goes right to the boat. The pictures of them on the yacht. Oh yeah. And I go I go to pre Phoenix back tattoo and just a simpler <laughs> time <laughs> with him without his Dunkin' Donuts cups. Kelly Clarkson in 2002 wins American Idol. She's the first one that wins. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the Osbournes help kick off these celebrity reality shows. And this breeds off other shows like Ice Loves Coco and Juliana and Bill and even Denise Richards colon It's Complicated, which <laughs> I loved. I love that show so much. Merv, her father, loved it. I got to dig that one up. Oh, it's I, so I've never good. seen it. It's so good. She loves her dad and he's so sweet. It's Aww. not very entertaining really, but it's it's good. I enjoyed it. it. It was a dark time in my life. I just say that about any time in my life. 2002 <laughs> sounds dark. <laughs> what a year. <laughs> yeah. And thanks to the popularity of these shows, somehow E decides to give Anna Nicole Smith a show. So the show debuts on the E Network in 2002 with So So Numbers. It crashes pretty hard. Rebecca, I sent you a clip. Did you see what people liked about it or... Well, I made it a whopping six minutes and I you did. I I couldn't continue. I am so sorry. I feel like I let you down. <laughs> no, you didn't. Listen, it's one of those you had to be there things where it does not age well whatsoever. And the show is around for three seasons, really two and a half. It got canceled after the second season, but it it follows Anna Nicole Smith, her son Daniel. Howard K. Stern, her attorney, her assistant Kim, and her dog Sugar Pie. And it's really a train wreck the entire time. I actually started an anti-anxiety medicine a few days ago, and it made me really, really tired. So I started watching this show and fell asleep, and I just had it on YouTube, and I woke up to clips that are never before seen. I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> She's on this date with this guy from the Howard Stern show, and he's like rubbing her arms. It was so Ew. sexual, and I had no idea. I You're thought, like, am I dreaming? Is this real? I was reading like, you know, <laughs> side effects of the medication was like Anna Nicole Smith hallucinations. Like, I could not figure it's it out. It's a mirage. It was I, crazy. It was crazy. I, I honestly, like, my breaking point was her bedding. They were like <gasps> bringing over her bedding, and it was like the worst shades of every pink and purple synthetic satin it was making me so like viscerally uncomfortable I like I, I couldn't yeah. watch it and it was not shot well it was not beautiful no 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 mm -mm. like when you say it didn't Terrible. age well I don't know that it looked good then either you know I, like I wondered the same thing now I don't think her style did so she had Bobby Trendy was her designer yes and we, he I met him <laughs> yes luxurious 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 that's all I remember about him is he said luxurious a lot but he fought with her and would like not want to come in because it was a holiday weekend like he's like I'll be <laughs> celebrating my freedom on, on they're like July 4th is tomorrow he's like sorry we celebrate all weekend all luxurious weekend. yes so anyway so he was her designer and that was a huge like the nemesis on the show or whatever so yes. it was that was entertaining to watch but also we didn't have a lot of options you couldn't just pull up a TV show like you can True. now. We yeah, you, we were you destined were to watch it. Stuck with but, what you had. Yeah, it's Sunday nights. I had no other options, so it's canceled. But during this time, life still goes on for Anna Nicole. So she has this show. She gets a lot of notoriety. She's gained a lot of weight, and then she goes kind of MIA. Nobody sees her for a while, but she pops up again in October of two thousand three. And she's lost sixty nine pounds and becomes the spokesperson for. Nutrislim? Trim Spa Baby. Trim Spa Baby, <laughs> of course. Okay, so she's back in the public eye and she's once again in demand. But really, her victory is very short lived. In 2004, do you want to guess where she went? Rehab. Back to court where oh. age. <laughs> <laughs> it's always court or rehab, you're, you're, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you were helpful on that one. She's back in court and this judge reverses the $88 million award. And so she's given nothing. Shoot. Again, Rebecca, yes. But a roller coaster ride. Yes, things aren't over. On February 28th, 2006, she's dressed in all black and she arrives at the Supreme Court for a hearing regarding her late husband's estate. And on May 1st, the Supreme Court rules unanimously that she can pursue J. Howard's fortune, which overruled the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which had earlier ruled that federal courts could not handle the Smith's case. Are you following? 
Kind of. Hold okay, on. Because I'm not. <laughs> Supreme Supreme Court of Texas? No, ma'am. The United States Supreme Court. S- this Okay. What? Ruth Bader Ginsburg wrote what? the dissent. So that Nicole could fight her. So Nicole can fight her papa. husband's estate. Jeez, oh Lord. Oh yes. my gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is all new information for you. I love it. Enough about court, though, because we've been here for eight years. <laughs> Let's talk a little about her personal life. In 2004, Anna meets this man named Larry Burkhead, and he is a Kentucky native, and he's a photographer, and she meets him at the Kentucky Derby, or as I text you, the Louisville horse thing. I said, (laughs) I can't remember the name for this Louisville horse thing. So the two hit it off, and there's video of when they first meet, and it's actually kind of a sweet interaction. And her team says, hey, we're doing this kids' charity event. Could you come photograph Anna at this? And so he decides to do that. And he gets really, really sweet shots. He said that, you know, he sees this stripped down, very beautiful version of her. And she looked great and healthy. And she's working at this kids' charity. And they really kind of fall in love. And Larry says that he quickly moves to L.A. to be with her. He leaves Kentucky, goes to L.A. to be with her. So he moves in with her, Daniel, her assistant, Kim, her attorney, Howard K. Stern, all of them are living in this house. I remember him now that you're saying him. I Yes, Frosted I remember tips. him. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And so he says that he never saw Anna Nicole taking illegal drugs, but he noticed at times sometimes she would take too much or she might take the wrong medication. She was not very careful with what she was taking, and he was very concerned about that. I and, am too. Yeah, and in recent years, she had been prone to seizures. In oh, fact, geez. the night before her infamous American Music Awards, which you know that one where she says, do you like my body? That, she had had a seizure the night before. And he, oh, yeah. He, who let her on stage? This makes me so mad. Her The yes people, all the people that think she's entertaining and everything else, but she was not healthy. She was not in no. a good place at all. As you can tell from watching that clip, it's horrifying to watch that. But during this time, Larry says that they're really in love. He's very concerned about her, but they decide to have a baby. She really has always wanted a baby girl, so they decide they're going to have a baby. But by the time she's six months pregnant, she's saying, I think you're in this for money. I think you're in this for fame. I think you're in this for all the wrong reasons. Basically, people are telling her, like, this guy's not any good. He actually was a pretty decent guy. I mean, he seems like a really, really good guy, actually. And she tells him, hey, this baby's not even yours, so <gasps> don't worry about it. This baby is Howard K. Stern's. Which, her lawyer. Yeah, her lawyer. But Rebecca, it wasn't just Howard K. Stern that said he was the father. Come to find out, I don't even know how to do this. Do you remember Zsa, Zsa Gabor? <laughs> of course I do. Okay. Zsa, Zsa Gabor's husband of like 30 years, his name is Prince Frederick von Unholt. And that's me trying to pronounce things. He claims he and Anna had an affair for 10 years and he could be the father of, of this new baby. Wow. I mean, oftentimes the dads are absent. You've got like three vying yeah. <laughs> participants who are like, was me. No, it was me. I know. I it's a, like bachelor kind of thing or whatever. It's very it's, bizarre. This would have been the interesting reality show. Yeah. Right. And so he is 59 years old at the time. Zsa Zsa is 90 at the time, and the two have been married for about 20 years. Wow. But according to Prince, not only could this baby be his, but here's where it gets even crazier. At one point, Anna begs him to make her a princess. And he says, well, I can't make you a princess because the only way I can do that is divorcing Zsa Zsa. But he could adopt her. And he fills out adoption papers to adopt this grown woman to make this happen. But Ultimately, at 90 years old, Zsa Zsa Gabor was not interested in adopting a reality star. <laughs> I mean, this, Why ever not? <laughs> I know. I know. It sounds crazy. And if you watch uh, Love After Lockup, it's very puppy Amber and Vince. They have this whole adoption, fake adopting an old, an adult kind of thing going on. But it wasn't. It's actually how he became a prince to begin with. At the age of 30 in 1980... He meets this lady, Marie Auguste of Anhalt. This is me just trying. And she's married to somebody. He ends up having her adopt him. So he's, Prince is literally, how do I explain this? His name Prince is part of the legal surname in Germany, but it's not a princely title. So he's not even a prince, but he's trying to adopt her to make her a princess, but he's not a prince. Rebecca, did you know that people with money do this kind of crazy things? 
I, I didn't, I, I like, I get chasing, trying to be in it. And again, this is crazy dovetailing with my story that I'm sharing next. So I'm like, my mind is blown, but like, no, I didn't know you could like find creative loopholes into the royal lineage. Do we, do we want that for the vision board? (laughs) We do not. This is, this is going on the blacklist. (laughs) the oh, anti-vision board there you go we do need one of each i think you're right i think so so at this time three men are saying they're the father of this baby anna nicole flees to the bahamas with howard kate stern who again says he's the father larry is heartbroken but there's not really much he can do till this baby's born and he can try and get a paternity test yeah i'm like waiting for the paternity test yeah and so anna nicole's son daniel's living in la he's staying with this director and friend of anna's named ray martino And by the way, we've forgotten about Pierce Marshall, but on June 20th, 2006, around the same time, he dies of septic shock. Yeah, he spent the last 15 years of his life fighting his stepmom and his brother, and all of his assets end up going to his wife and children. But the battle isn't over yet, Rebecca. How? Also, well, one, when you brought him back up, I'm like, does he say he's the father? Then when, <laughs> when, when I learned he didn't, I'm like, I mean, toxicity will kill you. Sorry, but that sounds like a miserable way to live and die. Total 15 years. And this wasn't like we talked about the Lady Walker thing. He wasn't doing that before. They have so yeah. much money. Like there's just, it's he so could have given people money just to pay them I off know. to stop it. I know. It's really sad. So things are relatively quiet in the Bahamas until Anna Nicole gives birth to her daughter on September 7th, 2006. Her daughter was born Hannah Rose Marshall Stern, uh, taking Howard K. Stern's last name. She ends up going by Danny Lynn later. Anna gives the baby Howard's last name, and he's also on the birth certificate as being the father, which is another blow to poor Larry. Daniel finds out, you know, his mom's had his baby sister. He flies to the Bahamas to be with his mom and his new sister. Super sad. Three days later, on September 10th, 2006, in the same hospital room where she's recovering, Anna goes to wake up Daniel and tries to get his attention, and he's died. In Wait. The, yeah. What? Yeah. Her son? Mm-hmm. I don't he, remember that. Yeah. It's kind of like the catalyst for everything crashing oh, for the rest of her life. My Isn't gosh. that terrible? How did he die? An autopsy showed that he had an accidental overdose of methadone, Zoloft and Lexapro. So Lexapro, he has a prescription for. He took Zoloft for a fear of flying. Mm -hmm. Anna had been taking methadone for years. So they don't know how he got it, but they know it was around. No, I just, that's really serious. I mean, if you're, you're taking methadone, if Anna was taking methadone, I mean, that means she was in treatment for a serious addiction. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So she's so sad devastated she if you even watching the clips of her on her show she adored her son if there was one person i would say she loved it was her son she just really really loved him and he seemed like a really good kid he was very smart he was in college and shied away from all the attention just seemed to really love his mom and add to this she now has a three-day-old daughter and some sort of unhealthy relationship with medication she's not doing well and this doctor christine Rosevich, she's a psychiatrist and friend of Anna Nicole's. They have to sedate her for this funeral. And she ends up kind of helping her, basically keeping her sedated for a while because she's not doing well. She puts her on something called chloral hydrate, which is really just a sedative. But Anna's not taking it as prescribed. She's basically just chugging it. Howard K. Stern goes on Larry King's show. He says he's the father of Danny Lynn, says that he and Anna Nicole are in love. It's really bizarre during this time. All the appearances are just it's weird and she starts feeling better after a few months in the Bahamas and she becomes obsessed with getting a boat she wants to move her life to the Bahamas that's where she feels happy and they want to get a boat so Howard finds one in Florida and they leave to go get it and so she takes this trip to the Bahamas with the babies left uh, with a nanny but it's her bodyguard the psychiatrist Howard Kaster what a team yeah not enough people I will say so During this time, she's getting HGH and B12 shots to help her maintain her weight. On the flight to Florida, she starts complaining of her left side hurting. She has a 105 degree fever, which is like brain boiling. Yeah. Deadly. Yeah. Yeah. But she refuses to go to the hospital. She apparently has this infection in her leg. It's really swollen and red, but she just refuses to go. So on the third day in Florida, they're staying at the Hard Rock Hotel 
She's in an empty bathtub. She's confused and worried something's going to happen. She begs this doctor, her friend, like, do not leave because something's going to happen to me. But the psychiatrist has to leave and go back to her practice. On February 8th, Howard decides he's still going to get this boat that he came to Florida for. The whole reason for this trip is to get this boat, and they had a captain that was going to sail them all back to the Bahamas. He goes to get it. Leaving her? Leaving her with the bodyguard and his wife, or the bodyguard's wife, rather. The bodyguard's wife, Bridget, goes to check on her, and she's not breathing. So she doesn't call 911. She calls her husband, the bodyguard, and he calls Howard. And 38 minutes later, the bodyguard arrives. Nobody's called 911 yet. I'm sorry, and then what? They call 911. I, I think it's all like the way I took this was they know she's messed up on medications. They know she doesn't want to go to the hospital and they want somebody to assess her. So if she has to go, they can call, but but they I don't think they think it's that bad. I, I think I she's like been it. in bad situations and that this I isn't don't care. so I know. Well, it's it's terrible. And Just so proof. Yeah, absolutely. And so she dies shortly after. She's 39 years old, but things still aren't over for her or for her estate. Her family in Texas fights to have her body moved to Texas to be buried. Obviously, Howard K. Stern and everybody in Bahamas is wanting her to be buried in the Bahamas because Daniel's been buried in the Bahamas. So the judge rules to have them buried together, which I think is good. But the case for the now deceased Pierce and now deceased Anna Nicole still aren't over what yes at this point whoever is Danny Lynn's father is going to be a millionaire that you know she's going to be a millionaire if things go through so at six months old Danny Lynn has a DNA test I'm like edge of my seat want to know who her yeah (laughs) so several men submit DNA there was even another one and it's found that Larry Burkhead is the father okay yeah he comes out of court and he does this weird I told you so, fist pump, and I, it's burned in my brain where it's like, oh, that didn't get the reception you wanted. But yeah, and yeah. I, I truly think he's actually a very, very good guy. But the day after he finds out he's he's the father, he meets Danny Lynn for the first time, and he gets to go pick her up. Aww. There's video. I've, I saw some video. Howard showing him how to feed her, teaches him the schedule. And he says, Larry says that to this day that Howard is very supportive of him and Danny Lynn, wow. which I think is sweet. Yeah, because it, it was very messy with that whole paternity thing. Yeah, thank God they're kind of like thinking of the child and they like are. trying to do this right. Yeah, for sure. And according to Anna Nicole's will, Howard is the executor and she left everything to her son, Daniel, who also oh. is now deceased. I know. So everything now is going to go to Danny Lynn, which at the time is about $700,000 in assets, plus whatever comes up in this world's longest court case. Yeah. So Howard continues to fight on Danny Lynn's behalf and appeals to the U.S. Supreme Court for a second time. Good Lord. Yeah. Ultimately, in 2009, they lose the judgment again, and it's found that the estate of Anna Nicole will receive nothing. Had she been successful, Rebecca... She would have gotten about 6% of Coke Industries and been worth about $8 billion. Oh, my gosh. I know. Instead, Pierce's widow, Elaine Marshall, is now worth about $17 billion and is one of the richest women in the world. I wasn't expecting that. Wait, Pierce's who? Ex? Wife. His wife. No, uh, his current wife. Yeah, his widow. Well, he died, so his He died. Mm -hmm. His widower. (gasps) Oh. Wow. I mean, when you hear all the people involved and all the money at stake, you kind of can understand why it dragged out for so long and why everyone was fighting so hard. This is not Trump change, but wow. Yeah. Whenever I realized that she was one of the richest people in the world, I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) Now I get why you guys were not letting it go for a while. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And as far as Other legal trouble, Howard and the doctor, the psychiatrist, came under some problems after Anna Nicole Smith's death when it finds that she has this prescription for several medications, and a lot of them weren't even in her name, but they were in her possession. I was going to ask if they got any, if they had any trouble also with just, um, you know, I don't know what it would be called, like not calling for help, like. The Good Samaritan if, law or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Something. I don't know. They're, so, I know they're working on that in certain places. I have no idea what it is in okay. the Bahamas. But no, they didn't get in any trouble for that. But they were both charged in 2009 and convicted of getting her drugs under a false name. Wow. Yeah. But in 2011, a judge finds that 
the reason they were doing this was for her privacy. That's what they were fighting. They were saying, we couldn't just get Anna Nicole Smith methadone under Anna Nicole Smith. People would have known. And the judge bought it, I guess. And um, so so mm. they the charges for uh, Howard, both of those were dropped. And one from the doctor. She had one reduced uh, for getting her Vicodin under a fake name. So today, the court cases are over. The battles are over. And Danny Lynn... Anna Nicole's daughter is 14 years old and oh seems to be a super well-adjusted, mild-mannered, beautiful little girl. Larry seems to be a really great dad. He seemed to really love Anna and wants his daughter to remember her fondly. So after I finished researching this, there was something on Hulu, or I'm sorry, maybe 2020, a few weeks ago, and I ended up watching it after. I didn't want to watch it till I finished. And it's it's him meeting Anna Nicole, some of her family, and showing Danny Lynn different things from her mom's past. It was very, very sweet. It's why I think he's a decent guy. He just seems like yeah. a nice guy that, you know, it's just a rough situation all the way around. But what a story, Rebecca. I, I, I'm, that was a lot. And that's <laughs> a lot of tragedy and death around so her. So much. And I worry for Danny Lynn. I'm glad to hear that you just saw something that looked really good. I hope they're keeping a really good kind of focus on her because, you know, her brother. Oh, my gosh. Her, like half brother mm -hmm. and her mom both having overdoses. I just like I'm already worried for I her. I know. I know. But I'm glad to hear it sounds like it's on the up and up and that they're taking good care of her. But what a story. I mean, yeah, it's hard to know what to think about it all. Like, I know. You know, the fame and the money at any cost, because that was a high, high price she paid. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's such a, I mean, there's a crime element to it with, you know, Howard and them being in trouble for that. And then all the court battles. I, I truly, I knew there was a lot of court pieces to this, but I had no idea how far people would go. I did not know you would spend 15 years of your life fighting over this money. It just seems like a miserable, miserable way to live i can yep. understand some from her point but that's about all i want to say about that but it was just it was a lot i just i couldn't believe half of this and i felt like i knew a decent amount of this but now i i don't know there's just a lot honestly i'm surprised we haven't seen a recent documentary on all of this i'm sure there's been like shows and exposes have yeah. there been i feel like a, this warrants like a good a good one right of doc don't you think yeah there's a lot of interesting parts to it for sure i mean it's yeah. very compelling I do we know. pitch this is this is this did a this just board? happen did we just put this did out we there? Just pitch it? <laughs> <laughs> what would you call it oh gosh the anna nicole smith story colon a mo money mo problems probably because it's just crazy That's, i think gonna be one of the through lines in our podcast is like it just feels like the richer people get the harder things become and I, I, honestly, the less good decisions people seem to make. And yeah. they allow shenanigans to become very big problems because they want, they're become part of a machine of money. And I, I just, it really upsets me because obviously Anna Nicole needed some different kind of help and assistance yeah. a lot earlier, right? And oh, yeah. just, I don't like how that was handled. So No, I know. And the people she was around, it was just, I mean, not blaming them or anything it's just I feel like she Larry was a good person to have in her corner it sounds like it yeah, sounds like he wanted her to be healthy and all of that and then people got in her ear and then that was over but I'm going to look for a much more upbeat true crime one I mean this had a lot of craziness in it but if we're doing crime it's just gonna have some sad elements to it but ugh. It's hard, Melissa, to find a case with like a good balance of levity and a crime. Yeah. <laughs> like the minute it, there's like a criminal component or a death or it, it just, it gets heavy. It does. So I'm with you. My story next time will be, uh, it will kind of be similar. -ish. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Not really. There's some parallels. Is there 10 pages of just, they went to court, they went to court, they went to court? Because I feel like no, I got that covered. There's 10 pages though. Oh, there you go. So yeah, Ugh, it's a different kind of rabbit hole and a different kind of deja vu. I kept having deja vu. I don't know if you had that with the court, like, because I remember you saying like, and then they went to court again. Yeah. My, my story has an element of that, but it doesn't involve court, but like kind of a reoccurring scenario which okay. is weird every time you said we're gonna ask me a question about the court I was like oh no I've already blocked 90 percent of this off think on your toes think on your toes think on your toes <laughs> I'm a court tv junkie ah, I love it 
So Rebecca, before we go, what are you watching this week? So what I've been watching a lot of has to do with my next case. So I can't tell you that part. Sure. But don't worry, I can watch more than one thing at once, so <laughs> we're all good. So this show I'm watching, here's a few clues. British. Okay. PR chi- and child star. Okay, now it does ring a, ring a bell. I know what it is. You're watching Flack. I am watching Flack, which is a weird title. It is. And I don't think it... Do we like, know what it means? Well, I thought flack meant like um, when you give someone flack for something, which is like a hard oh, time. Yeah, yeah. So in relation to the show, it actually means a publicity agent. Oh. And when it's a verb, it's like to publicize or promote something. So we've turned it into a negative, like to give someone flack. But I think you can also flack yourself in the media. I'd rather not flack myself in the media. <laughs> Thank you very much. That can lead to self-defecation. <laughs> Oh, that was perfect. (laughs) But yeah, it's this um, Amazon Prime show starring Anna Paquin, who was the youngest, one of the youngest people to ever get an Oscar from the movie The Piano way back in the day. I really haven't seen much of her, but she's an incredible actress, I think. She was on a vampire. What's the vampire show? Something vampire. Oh. uh, Couple vampires. It was on Showtime. True Blood. She was on True Blood. Boardwalk Vampire. That was (laughs) Boardwalk Empire. Empire. (laughs) Um, okay, I didn't watch that or see her in that. Yeah, she is a listener of Mom's Murder, which is one of the weirder things That's in the so world. That's so cool. Isn't it? Oh, maybe she'll be a fan of criminality. Maybe. And I'm not changing my review of this show right now. I really, really loved this show. And it's on Amazon Prime, and it follows her. She works in PR in London, but her and her sister seem American. Yeah. Because like mm-hmm. I'm like, why doesn't she have a British accent? Everybody else does. It's because they moved there. But anyway, it's a really bold kind of stark look at the the PR publicity world in London, which is very cutthroat, kind of feels like a parallel to the shows and the movies we've seen about men on Wall Street in a certain oh, era. Yeah, yeah. It's like mm-hmm. these. this is like the story of women in this industry yeah. and kind of what it does to their personal lives or professional lives. Um, but I, I've really liked it. Yeah, it's very fast paced. I've only, I'm only a few episodes in. I started it and then I think I got distracted by something else and um, need to go back to it. I really enjoyed it. It's jarring. It's definitely not um, suitable for work, even though it's about work. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's adult, but uh, I really, really like it. Nice. Uh, what are you watching? Okay. My clues are bad hair, bad real estate, legal wife. I talk about this bad, one a lot. Bad hair, bad real estate. Bad legal, legal wife. Bad legal. Oh, it's got to be sister wives. It's sister wives. Yay. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I, I don't watch it, but I know you and I know you talk about that a lot. It's, Bad hair. That's a dead ringer. Yeah. And then legal wife. Yeah. So, yeah. So what, what's the real estate component? Oh, my Just gosh. In a, These in a nutshell. Idiots. In a nutshell, they <laughs> are married, you know, four of them. So Cody and his four wives, they had these houses in Las Vegas and they sell all of them to move to Flagstaff, Arizona. And they're going to build on this place called Coyote Pass. Well, Turns out the market's not that great. It's taken them over a year to sell these houses. So he's like, we're going to make money. We're going to make money. Now they're all buying separate houses, not on Coyote Pass. And there's like a retention pond on there that everybody wants access to. It doesn't make any sense. They have been fighting last year. I'm not kidding you. They were all moving out of rentals the whole time. It's just watching people pack and unpack over and over and over again. But sounds like my life. I know it was. (laughs) It's terrible. And I love it. And they all hate each other this season. So that I find a lot of joy in just watching somebody else just be really, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it's just interesting. I've watched it for 15 seasons. So I'm very invested in them moving from house to house. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if I were to start now on Sister Wives, should I start current or do I need to go back and really understand everything leading up to right now? Um, You might want to watch like a f- the first season. I would say watch the first okay. season when they're happy and pretend – that everybody's happy with this fourth wife idea. Now you'll see that the fourth wife is the favorite wife and is now the legal Uh wife. And it's a whole thing. Yeah. We're about to find out who we quarantined with and we all know it's going to be Robin. Everyone knows he quarantined with just Robin and, and abandoned the other three wives. I know it. So it's interesting. It's taken 15 seasons to figure out like it's not 
easy or maybe a great idea. Right. He even said that this season. Spouse. He was like, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't do it. I'm like, well, there's three of them that aren't going to be happy. Yeah. 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 It's fascinating. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll maybe give it a try and add it to, add it to the list. You I don't, don't have know. To lie I to me. Put it on the blackboard. <laughs> Just get rid the of it. Blackboard. <laughs> the blacklist has the become black a blackboard. List, sorry. I like that. No, blackboard kind of makes sense. It's like the old school chalkboard. There you go. Okay. Don't patronize me. What is your clue? What are your clues for next week? Okay. So your clues for my next story are a sugar baron, an oil heir, and a German prince. Whoa. I feel like we had two out of three of those this time. You're right. I I know. That's why I'm like, this the is prince. so interesting. And yet mm. the story is so different. And it's it really is like contextually date and time and place very different. And I can't wait to tell you. I feel like I'm going to self-defecate before this happens. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, these are, these are like, peripheral clues like I'm I trying like to it. make it a little hard because sure. I think I could I could give you other ones that would be too easy yeah that would be too boring so you guys all just have to listen again in two weeks for the new story yes absolutely well thank you guys for listening and we will be back in two weeks with Rebecca's uh, did you say honey bear <laughs> I forgot the first clue sugar bear sugar, sugar bear <laughs> I mean, I don't know why that's not like in your normal vernacular. But I like that I said honey bear. Like I literally took it as a bear situation. Okay, we'll be right back to, or in two weeks to figure out what on earth that even means. And if I can use words like deprecate and defecate correctly. We'll see. Yeah, we're going to work on it. <laughs> Have a great two weeks, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you for listening to Criminality. If you're enjoying the show, please head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you listen and give the show a rating and review. The reality is it would be a crime to keep your thoughts to yourself. And come join the fun outside of the podcast and follow us on social media. We are at Criminality Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Memes are welcome. We'll see you in two weeks with a new episode. Until then, you can catch my co-host Melissa on her weekly show, Moms and Murder. And Rebecca Sebastian on her podcast, Dialogue, a true crime conversation. Don't forget, loving reality isn't a crime.